All right. For those that are just joining, my name is uh, Tina Wajardo, Registered Dietitian and Health Educator with Brunson Community Health. And today's conversation is on let's plant antioxidants. Um, I just did some housekeeping um, information. And when we start all of our presentations, we also want to share with you on how you can access care and get the help that you might need here at Bronson. So our first feature here that I want to share with you guys is our find a doctor feature. You can find a primary care provider. You can also find a specialist on our bronsonhealth.com website under find a doctor, or you can call our care advisors at 269-341-7788. And you can search for doctors um, or any advanced practice provider um, by zip code. Um, you can narrow down who is accepting new patients. So it's pretty handy if you're looking for a provider in a certain area. If you are um, a Bronson patient and ever have any needs in regards to your MyChart, whether you're using the app or just your account through the website, Bronson Health Answers is available um, at 269-341-7723, or you can email at, at the address listed there, um, and they can help you with any MyChart issues that you might be having. Um, our patient accounting department is available for any billing or payment plan questions that you may have. And the last feature I want to share with you guys is what we have is the price estimator tool. You can use this tool either through my chart, whether you have an active account or not, or you can call the phone number listed there for the price estimator team. So let's say your doctor or your specialist has referred you for something along the lines like an x-ray, MRI, some lab work, whatever it may be. You can call this phone number or use the estimator tool on my chart to kind of get an understanding of how um, much that is going to cost you out of pocket with the insurance plan that you have. So please utilize that if you ever need. So what are we going to be talking about today? Today, our goals are um, learning the importance of antioxidants in our diet. We are going to discuss different ideas on how to eat more antioxidants through herbs, which I don't think we often think about as an antioxidant source. Um, we are going to identify herbs that are good sources of antioxidants and also easy to grow at home. And then we'll talk about some um, planting tips in order to grow these herbs in our, in our home. So I have a question for you guys. Um, a first question, and you can unmute yourself to answer this question, or you can just type your answer in the chat. But what have you planted already this year? And it doesn't have to be an herb. If maybe it's a flower or a vegetable, I would love to hear what you guys have already been working on for planting. I'll give you guys a second to unmute or type out your answers in the chat. Um, I have replanted a couple of um, uh, flowers, uh, moved them to a different location. I've purchased my veggies, but I haven't planted them yet. I was very nervous about getting them straight out into 90 degree weather. So um, Denise has shared in the chat here that she has planted her tomatoes and jalapeno peppers. Um, tomatoes and peppers are definitely what I focus on this year as well. Great for chilies and pasta sauces and salsas. Um, Penny says nothing yet, um, but have some flower bulbs that are going to be going into the ground soon. Very nice. Uh, replanted some coral bells and lots of flowers. Yeah, you know, I think it's hard to determine exactly where you want your flowers to go until you've given them a couple of years to grow and see what height they're going to be and then re kind of figuring out where you want them to go in the long run. Um, Nikki says marigolds are planted. Those are a good choice and still needing to plant the dusty. I love the dusty millers. I forget about those. I um, haven't planted any yet. Oh, sunflower and milkweed. Good job planting the milkweed, the monarch butterfly flower mix. Okay, so you got some wildflowers going on. Um, basil, cilantro, rosemary, and coreopsis flowers. Yes. All right, Kathleen, 
you're ahead of the game here on our herb conversation and these antioxidants. So sounds like lots of you guys are working on your flowers um, and uh, some, some plans for some vegetables too. Very good. Thank you guys so much for sharing. All right, so let's talk about what antioxidants are. First off, I want to um, you know, talk about how antioxidants can be a, a couple of different things. Um, antioxidants can be a, um, a vitamin. Some vitamins like vitamin C and vitamin E are required to be um, present in order for antioxidants to do their job properly. Vitamin C and vitamin E can also be an antioxidant themselves. Um, antioxidants can be a mineral. Um, things like uh, zinc or selenium are antioxidants. And then antioxidants can also be an enzyme. So we won't spend too much talking uh, time talking about, I feel like that's a conversation in and of itself, but just to kind of give you an idea that antioxidants um, can be vitamins, minerals, or an enzyme. And so what do antioxidants do? Well, first, antioxidants are, are those, those agents that absorb and attach to these destructive molecules that can arise in our body that are called free radicals. Now, free radicals, um, you know, we always have a certain number of free radicals in our body. Uh, free radicals are not always necessarily a negative thing. There's a certain threshold that once we exceed that threshold of free radicals in our body, that is when it starts to get risky. So we actually have free radicals in our body that are created, formed when we eat food and that food is digested and turned into energy free radicals are produced. When we exercise, free radicals are produced. We know that eating is a good thing for us. We know that exercise is a good thing for us. Um, and so those free radicals are not necessarily negative. However, once we cross that threshold and we have more free radicals than we should be having within our body, especially free radicals coming from these negative um, areas like um, cigarette smoking or being exposed to secondhand smoke, uh, that creates free radicals in our body. Um, Low-grade inflammation, which is kind of a broad terminology, but can result if we are living with extra body weight. Um, if we have insulin resistance, that can create free radicals in our body. And then some things we just don't necessarily have control over, which is like air pollutants that um, can cause these free radicals too. So antioxidants are essential in our diet because they prevent then these free radicals from attacking these normal healthy cells in our body, okay? Um, so why should we include antioxidants in our diet? Well, we know that antioxidants serve a role against these free radicals, and by decreasing these free radicals in our body, it may lead us to decreased cancer risk in the long run. Um, however, I want to clarify, right, because, you know, we look at vitamin C, we look at vitamin E, um, we, you know, there's antioxidant blends in the form of supplements. Research shows that antioxidants are best I won't say best absorbed, are best taken through food rather than supplements. And let me um, expand upon that just a little bit. There is a lot of, I think, unknown still when it comes to antioxidants and how um, they best work in our body. Um, so there is a lot of research that show that antioxidants work differently for everybody in their body, just kind of maybe based upon their gut microbiome, um, what type of gut bacteria they have. And so it is best, of, you know, best to choose that um, antioxidant from food rather than supplement because food provides us not just an antioxidant source, but when we're looking at our common antioxidant sources from food, they're also providing us things like, you know, other vitamins and minerals, fiber and protein 
um, where we're not necessarily getting those other uh, benefits from the supplement only. Um, and so that is why it is recommended to get antioxidants from food rather than supplement. So we are spending most of our time today talking about antioxidants from um, herbs, but I also want you guys to be aware that antioxidants come from many other different types of foods here. So on the screen, you're seeing a list of um, fruits and vegetables and legumes and nuts and seeds, grains and protein that we can get antioxidants from as well. I mentioned vitamin C as being an antioxidant. So on the screen that you're seeing, we see vitamin C sources such as um, you know, bell peppers, uh, broccoli, uh, oranges. Uh, we're seeing vitamin E from our leafy greens, um, our cashews and sunflower and pumpkin seeds. We see zinc from our chickpeas and lentils on the screen, as well as beef. Um, and so again, I just want you guys to know that antioxidants come from a variety of other whole food items uh, as those listed on the screen. So another question for you guys, and we're gonna answer this one in the poll. And so I wanna know from you, of the herbs that are going to be listed in the poll question, which of those do you use most often? So you should be seeing that up on your screen. Which herb do you use the most often? Is it rosemary, oregano, parsley, thyme, dill, basil? Maybe it's none of those and it's something else and you can you know, feel free to put that in the chat or um, do you just not even use any herbs? I'd say for me, I probably use basil fresh most often, but if I were looking at a dried herb, it would probably be parsley, to be honest. All right, looks like most of you guys have uh, participated in the poll, and it looks like most of you are using parsley most often. Um, with the second place choice of oregano and basil, and then one of you is using um, rosemary and thyme most often. So thank you guys. It gives me a good insight as to what kind of herbs you like to use. So, you know, when we look at um, databases for the antioxidant content of certain foods, these that are listed on the screen, in which were just the herbs that I listed in the poll, these herbs are the herbs that are, I think, the most common to us here in the U.S. that also have the highest antioxidant content. Now, we're going to be speaking on antioxidants in herbs from um, a fresh herb perspective, but know that if we are drying these herbs, then um, the antioxidant property increases a bit. So common herbs that we have access to most often that are also good sources of antioxidants are rosemary, oregano, parsley, thyme, dill, and basil. So other than adding antioxidants to our dishes when we are using herbs, herbs have other benefits too. Um, herbs can add some really good flavor and nutrition to our dishes. Um, herbs can add a level of brightness from a, a vibrant color, usually green, in our dishes. And uh, herbs can offer a lot of different flavors to our meals without adding salts, right? That is an important concept, especially if maybe we are living with um, any sort of heart condition, such as high blood pressure or maybe we're living with kidney disease and we need to watch our sodium intake, herbs can be a good choice to add flavor without adding salt as our source of flavoring. I wanted to start us off just with this conversation and just getting some ideas. Um, and feel free um, to, to share in the chat, you know, as I go along, um, how you might use these, or, or maybe you're not even using them all that often, and these will just be some good ideas for you. 
At this point in our presentation, I am just giving you ideas, but at the end of the presentation, I'm going to have all of the links for the websites in which I um, obtained these ideas. So, um, you know, you'll, you'll be able to find a recipe for the strawberry rosemary uh, yogurt pops, right? So, um, all of those will be at the end of the presentation. So some ideas in which to use rosemary. Rosemary is not an herb I use uh, that often. I think of rosemary and I'm usually thinking like, actually, I don't even know, right? I don't use rosemary that often. So um, some ideas from the articles that I was reading was a, um, the combination of a strawberry and um, rosemary, rosemary, again, these are fresh herbs, a uh, yogurt pops, um, a rosemary parmesan popcorn, which I thought sounded super delicious, and then making a lemonade and adding some rosemary to it. Um, oregano, I think probably a little bit more common, um, but oregano fresh and dried both can be added to a hamburger and, and make patties out of that. Um, it could be added to a marinade for your chicken. And oregano go, tends to go well with any tomato-based sauces. So if you're making a spaghetti or a lasagna, oregano would go really nice in that. If you're making a pizza at home, you've got your tomato sauce, um, oregano fresh could be added to that as well. Again, please feel free to share if you've got any other ideas to add to that. For parsley, um, parsley is used oftentimes in a dish called tabbouleh, um, or it can be used in a quinoa salad. Um, so quinoa salad, you, you maybe, or like a quinoa bowl, it would be another way to say that. Um, quinoa being your um, base for the salad with whatever types of vegetables you wanted to add to it. Uh, maybe it's tomato, maybe it's spinach, uh, maybe you add some beans like black beans or quinoa salad to it. Some fresh parsley goes really well with that. Um, you know, some things are going to be better with fresh parsley. Some things are going to be better um, with dried parsley. These dishes here, especially with a quinoa salad, a fresh parsley is going to be a, a better option here. Um, a chimichurri sauce or a pesto for a, um, a pasta dish, a sauce for your pasta dish. Um, parsley can be added to a quiche, a potato salad. And there's lots of recipes out there using parsley to um, season your cod or your shrimp, which I have never considered before. So I thought that was interesting. Um, the herb thyme um, tends to go well with um, roasted items. So um, if you've got uh, carrots on you know, a baking sheet, some olive oil, uh, you're using thyme, a little pepper to season and roast those, that goes well together. Um, you know, when zucchini is in abundance nearing the end of summer, um, sauteing that and adding thyme to it can be a great use of it. Um, it tends to go really well, again, with like a roasted chicken, uh, maybe a pork loin, and time goes really good in some uh, chicken noodle soup. Um, dill, I think that one's probably a pretty common one for most of us. Um, dill can go really good in like a cucumber salad. So whether it just be cucumbers only or maybe cucumbers and tomatoes with dill. Um, there's lots of recipes out there for a dill sauce, which I thought sounded super delicious um, to just um, put a little sauce over your chicken or your salmon, again, to increase flavor, get those antioxidants, not add in any salt to that recipe. Um, dill potatoes, so uh, roasting maybe like a red potato, again, with uh, olive oil, sprinkling dill over top. Um, but dill can go pretty good in a, a potato salad as well, which is a summer classic. Um, and then I, for, I, I forget how to uh, pronounce this, uh, tzatziki uh, sauce, which is a Greek um, dip for either pita chips or uh, you can use it as a, a dip for vegetables, um, celery, uh, cherry tomatoes, carrots can be a really good source. And then dill, I've never done this before, adding it to peas or green beans. Um, share it if you if you have ever done that before, but that was a, a tip to, to add to your um, vegetables in that way. Basil, again, is probably the, the, the herb that I use most often 
um, fresh anyway. And so basil goes really well in a caprese salad. Um, if you're not familiar with that, um, it'd be sliced tomatoes, diced tomatoes, cherry tomatoes um, with basil and uh, maybe some mozzarella pearls with some olive oil or some balsamic vinegar. Basil adds that really good flavor to that. Basil also goes really good in tomato-based items. So I'm um, throwing it into a pot of spaghetti that you've made. Um, if you're making a, a soup, uh, like a minestrone, basil can go really good. And basil tends to go really well in um, fruit salads, right? So you've got some um, peaches, you've got some blackberries, and then you add some uh, basil to that. That's a nice combination. Um, there was a recipe for a lime basil pie, which I thought was very curious. Um, and then that quinoa bowl again, it, any of these herbs can really go well in this quinoa bowl. Again, just quinoa. And if you don't like quinoa and you find um, maybe a brown rice to be an easier choice to use, you can always use a brown rice as your base for your bowl too, to use these herbs. Oh, question for you. Nobody had any ideas as I was going through, but I wanna hear from you. What are some of your favorite ways to use um, you know, rosemary or basil or cilantro. Uh, we didn't talk about that one necessarily, but what are some ways that you like to use these herbs? Uh, go ahead and uh, share that in the chat or unmute yourself. Anybody got any ideas? I do tend to add like a dried uh, parsley to the top of a, a pasta dish. I heard somebody unmuting themselves. Virginia, go ahead if you wanted to. Yes, um, I use basil in just about everything. Okay. I put it, you know, in uh, salads. I put it in, you know, on my chicken, anything or any type of meat. And I'll mix it even in with if I'm making hamburgers or whatever, you know, I'll, I'll do that and mix it in with there. I'm a real, in a dill, I put, I make dill bread. I, I use dill for just about everything too. Okay, dill bread. That sounds intriguing. Thank you. Um, Kathleen in the chat says she adds, um, a lot of these herbs to salads and, and maybe you're speaking of just um, salad as a, a lettuce base. Um, Joan uses dill in her egg salad. That's a good idea. I've never thought about that. Nikki's made pesto with basil or parsley with sunflower seeds instead of pine nuts. Okay, I've never considered that. I like that idea. Rosemary on potatoes and just use some oregano in a pasta salad, but that was delicious. And then Penny says she uses many of these in a variety of different marinades. Very good. That dill and egg salad sounds really good. I like that idea. All right, so not only are these herbs that I um, have included in today's presentation, not only are these good antioxidant sources, but these are also pretty easy to grow at home here in Michigan, at least. Um, so let's start with um, rosemary. And again, if you guys have any experiences in growing these that you want to share and add to the conversation, please feel free. Um, rosemary tends to be a more challenging herb to start from seed. Um, so germinating yourself at home is a little bit more difficult. So um, you know, most often you would probably purchase rosemary from um, a store, a greenhouse. Most of these herbs cost between three to five dollars per plant. And, and most of these herbs are going to prefer full sun um, as far as their light requirements are concerned. Rosemary and um, thyme are both more of like an evergreen style herb where you're going to get that nice um, um, thick stem with these green shoots off of it. You're going to just use the green shoot part, the green leaf part. Um, they do want to be watered regularly, but they do not want to be over watered. Most things don't, right? Um, all of these herbs are going to really enjoy some good drainage. So Consider um, containers that already have a hole in the bottom to assist with that drainage. 
Um, and all of these herbs are going to do really well in either container gardening or in the ground gardening. Um, for rosemary and thyme both, uh, those can be um, used uh, and grown on the, on the inside of the home too during these colder months. Um, so con consider that when you're looking at what type of container you might want to bring in, maybe just a good old classic terracotta pot that you would wanna bring in. Um, and then when you are planting these, if you choose to plant rosemary in the garden, um, you know, companion planting might be something that you have been familiar with in the past. And um, this information is from MSU Extension, I believe. Um, rosemary tends to enjoy being planted with um, beans, cabbage, and carrots if you're going to be using an in-ground garden. Um, rosemary can get pretty tall, uh, four foot tall, four foot wide. So consider that when you're looking for a location to grow this. And those, those sprigs, those little green um, shoots that I was referring to, you can pluck those off if you're not going to be able to use them um, in time and air dry them, uh, storing them in an airtight container. So remember that when you've got herbs at home, the, the flavor is going to be best when um, those, those leaves are younger, right? Once they get a little bit older, um, especially with rosemary and thyme, they can get more of a woody flavor. So it's gonna be more preferred flavor when they're younger. So if you see that that stem's been sitting around for a while, it's been growing, it's a good time to pluck those um, green leaves off and air dry those sprigs. Again, you can um, take off the green or you can just cut the whole uh, stem and just air dry them whole. Um, has, does anybody have any experience in either air drying or other methods of drying? If so, I would love to hear you or put that in the chat. Um, air drying is one option, but um, you can also dry in a, a dehydrator. If you have a dehydrator at home, you can dry in a microwave, you can dry in an oven. Um, so there are other forms of drying. Um, and in an airtight container that could be preferably probably glass, just like we usually purchase most of our herbs in the store. Um, so uh, recycling um, old jam or jelly jars, maybe old pickle jars, depending how big it is. Those are good um, uses to kind of reuse um, a glass jar and storing it for the um, herbs that you have been growing at home. All right, oregano. Um, this one tends to be a little bit easier to grow from seed. Um, it is recommended to start those seeds um, indoors six to 10 weeks before the, loss, uh, the last frost, which we are past that last frost at this point, um, but that's okay. You can still start these uh, because they are so easy to start and grow. Um, you can put those seeds right into the guard, um, garden or you can put those seeds right into your container and you'll still have plenty of oregano for the summer months. Oregano tends to be very popular in the Mediterranean style diet. So um, if you um, were with me a couple of weeks ago, we learned about the Mediterranean diet. Oregano is popular there. And again, it does well in containers or gardens consider planting your seeds or, or if you're purchasing orego, oregano from the, the store, the greenhouses, planting those, um, those plants eight to 10 inches apart. And again, making sure that they are able to get adequate sun. Parsley um, tends to have low germination rate, uh, meaning if you were to put that seed in the soil, um, the rate in which you're going to have success in actual parsley plants from those seeds is lower. So the recommendation is that you would um, soak those seeds overnight in order to increase the success that it would turn into a parsley plant. Again, preferring full sun, they will reseed themselves and usually bloom every other year. And then those flat leaf varieties, there's like curly leaf and flat leaf varieties. If you're looking at like parsley at the the local grocery store, you can buy it in either, but the flat leaf variety tends to offer better flavor for cooking. Remember that when we are cooking with fresh herbs, we usually have to re 
um, use more fresh herbs in order to provide the flavor that we're looking for in comparison to dried. That dried is more of a concentrated flavor. We can get away with using a little less, but um, these fresh herbs require a little bit more uh, use in our cooking to get that same flavor. Um, thyme is the other um, evergreen style herb that I was referring to. Also more challenging to start from seed, just like the rosemary that we were talking about. Um, again, very popular in the Mediterranean um, area. Um, and these are pollinator friendly. As somebody was talking about um, uh, planting milkweed and um, um, uh, wildflowers. So thyme is pollinator friendly as well. So um, one of the tips is, you know, grow an extra thyme plant and let it bloom to um, attract some of our pollinators like um, bees and uh, butterflies. And then the English or French variety is the most common uh, thyme variety and use for cooking. They're quite hardy, right? So if you were to leave them out during the cold months, they will usually regrow back for you in the springtime. Again, I think with most any plants, you want to cut them down a little bit, um, you know, from the fall, um, so they don't get really woody and earthy um, in flavor come spring. And then they tend to go really well with um, rosemary. So planting rosemary and thyme both in one container um, because they are both evergreen style. They're both fairly hardy in a sense. They both have the same um, water requirements. So those tend to go really well together. But if you're planning on um, growing some thyme in your garden, then they pair well, they grow well with cabbage and tomatoes. Okay, so poll question for you guys. Do you prefer container or in-ground gardening? Um, and as I was kind of thinking about this question, I would say, you know, if you're using something like um, a raised bed, um, you know, with legs and such off the ground, I would consider that to be a container garden. Um, just, just a thought there. All right, so it looks like uh, most of you have participated in the poll already, and most of you guys are doing container garden. I completely understand um, container garden. I That's how I grow my herbs. I grow my herbs in separate pots and put them on the um, back deck. I think that's just a very convenient way to do it. I add some good um, scent to the back deck as well, in my opinion, um, and just easier for weeding, let's be honest, right? Um, two of you are doing in-ground gardening and two of you are not gardening at all. So hopefully for those that are not uh, doing any gardening, you have found some inspiration maybe to try some herbs at least in a container at home. Um, so dill, um, or maybe you've heard of it as dill weed, also native to the Mediterranean area, very easy to grow as well. So um, if you choose to purchase some dill seeds, you will likely get some good success in getting dill plants from those seeds, um, hence the grow like a weed, right? Um, it is an annual. Um, so um, most of these are, except for that time that I was referring, those can go, those can stay out for the colder months and they'll likely come back. Um, dill is annual, but if you let the plant um, continue to grow through the fall, and if you see in the picture, right, we've got those blooms at the top with the yellow, and you let that plant go to seed, um, then you can gather up those seeds and, and collect them and have more dill for the next year. And those blooms, whenever we can let anything um, go to bloom, they're going to be um, friendly for our insect friends. Um, Well-drained soil, full sun, we know that. A really great option for container garden, easy to grow, and we've got some really good ideas now on how to use dill. If you are going to be putting dill in the ground um, in your garden, uh, plant it with Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and broccoli. And I do not remember the reason why they said do not plant dill with carrots. Um, so if anybody knows that, um, maybe you would be willing to share. I can't remember what that reasoning was um, at the top of my head. 
Um, basil, again, one of those um, that they recommend to start your seed six to eight weeks before the last frost, but again, don't worry about it. If you haven't started your basil seeds yet, um, you still have time to uh, starch those or purchase some basil plants. Um, they are a little bit more sensitive as far as the seed is concerned as to what type of soil, what temperature soil um, that, that basil seed is started in. Um, but a really great option for um, containers or raised beds. They go really well with tomatoes, right? They they eat very well with tomatoes too in that caprese salad. Um, so they grow really well in a container or the ground together um, as well. And then for um, recommendations uh, as far as how to plant those basil um, plants in your garden, planting about 12 inches apart because they can get pretty big again. Remember, it is easy to just let these plants just continue to grow and forget to pick the, the leaf. Um, but remember, we're going to get the best taste from the leaf when it is a younger leaf. Um, so continue to pick these um, leaves as they are ready. Whether you're not necessarily ready to use them fresh, these can be dried as well. And when we pick those leaves off, the plant, it is going to continue to promote new basil leaves to grow so we can continue to enjoy the one plant throughout the entire um, growing season. Um, basil was identified as best storing method to be um, freezing. I've not froze basil before, so I don't have any experience in saying that, um, but again, a very good option to dry. So if we are choosing not to air dry or just you know, hanging out and air drying. We can use the microwave to air dry uh, these herbs. And, and so um, just some tips on that. If you just put your herbs in between two paper towels in the microwave, um, starting your microwave for about a minute to start, um, checking on the herb and seeing how um, crispy and dried out it is. And if it continues to need more drying time, and then just um, drying for 30 minutes, or sorry, 30 seconds more each time until it is completely dried. And you'll know when it's dried. Once it starts to easily crumble, then you're completely dried and you can store it away in your airtight container. Um, Nikki has added to the chat here, um, I've frozen in ice cubes and then added the cubes to recipes like soup or sauce. And I have seen that as well, Nikki, and I saw adding the herbs in um, oil and then freezing the, the, the cubes. Um, so tell us, um, or maybe you just, so maybe expand upon that, Nikki. Did you, did you put it in oil or did you just um, freeze the, the herbs themselves? Um, and then herbs can also be um, dried out in the oven too. Um, Okay, Nikki says she actually puts the herbs in water and freezes it and not in oil. So that's great. Great, great suggestion. These herbs can also be uh, dried out in the oven too. Um, so uh, baking sheet, yes, um, but don't put the herbs on the baking sheet directly. They're likely gonna stick and burn. Um, one of the recommendations was to use cheesecloth as your base on the baking sheet and then putting the herbs on top of the cheesecloth. I've not done that. Um, you can also use a silicone mat. So baking sheet, silicone mat, and then the herbs on top of that. And then um, just setting the oven to the lowest temperature possible, usually about 170 degrees. Just keeping an eye on that. And you can, again, just notice when they start to uh, be completely dried out because you'll start to see the crumble. And again, um, just an easy way to preserve them if you're not going to, to do a freezing or an air dry uh, method. So here are the recipe uh, resources. Uh, maybe you take a picture of them. I know you can't click on them. Oh, I think maybe you can click on them. Um, and I wanted to, but I want to share these in the uh, chat. So I am going to stop sharing because I want to share the resources in the chat. So give me a second while I make a copy of those. And then while I do that, I want to hear from you guys. What is one thing that you learned today that you plan on using in the next week? So what is one thing you plan on using? 
And while you guys do that, I am adding the uh, links to the recipes in the chat as well. So you can have those. So the links for the recipes are in the, um, the chat, but I wanna hear what you guys are going to be doing um, in regards to antioxidants and herbs. So some things in the chat here. Debbie says she's going to buy a basil plant. Absolutely. Um, Susan's going to add dill to egg salad. Me too, Susan. Me too. Um, using more herbs when cooking now. Sure. Yeah, hopefully you've got some good ideas. And again, it, it's hard to go through all of those ideas. Um, but please take a look at those links that I just put in. Most of them are from Taste of Home. Um, but you will notice that it's like, 44 different ways to use rosemary in recipes, right? So you're going to get a list of all of the recipes that use, uh, you know, fresh parsley, fresh rosemary. So that they are fun articles to share. Um, Kathleen says she's going to pick her fresh basil leaves and dry them in the microwave. Very good. Penny says she's going to use more herbs than she does now and use fresh more. And then use more of all of these herbs. Me too. I am. Um, I've not planted my herbs yet, so I am very much looking forward to this weekend getting my pots out and start starting my um, my uh, herbs. Very good. All right. So um, the last thing that I want to, the second last thing that I want to share with you guys, then I appreciate you guys coming to our antioxidant class here. I want to share with you guys some of the upcoming classes that we are going to be having. So our next class is going to be next Thursday. It's called Sweet Summer Escapades. And um, that is going to be about some outdoor games to play, um, keeping safe and having fun during the summertime. That's going to be taught by Isabel. We've got a couple of cooking classes coming up this month as well. Um, one on how to use up all of those strawberries. Um, and then the other class, if you were with us again a couple of weeks ago, we had Jillian um, with us from the Cancer Center. She's the dietitian at the Branson Battle Creek Cancer Center. And her and Chris are going to be doing a healthy cooking class on um, cancer prevention. So you know those recipes are going to be um, full of antioxidants, and maybe there might even be some recipes with herbs in there too. And remember that you can go to bronsonhealth.com, just type in Bronson Eats, it'll take you right to that website there, and you can register for any of these um, classes that are coming up. And so I'm just going to leave this here for you guys, um, the Spine Care and Help here at Bronson. And while I leave it up, I'm also going to be putting in the chat um, our survey monkey link. Um, and so that is just a quick survey, five or six questions or so. If you guys would not mind filling that out, um, we would appreciate it. We want to hear from you what you guys want to hear more about um, and kind of give us any feedback that you might have for class topics moving forward. So. That survey link is in the chat. If you would be willing to complete that, I appreciate it. And I thank you guys so much for attending today's class. Thank you.